Making condensers and water tanks, part two. After drilling and threading holes for the inlet and outlet fittings, I am preparing the tank for painting by scratching the surface using 100 grade emery cloth in the lathe. Before painting the parts, they need to be soft soldered together using solder paint and some multicore solder. I'm using soft solder rather than silver solder for this job because this part does not get very hot. Plus most of the time the tank is full of very hot water, which generally does not melt soft solder. It's also worth noting that this type of condenser oil trap is not a pressure vessel. That's another reason why soft solder is okay for the job. In this clip you can see that I've drilled and threaded two holes in the side of the tank. These are for the inlet and exhaust fittings. Now it's time to get on with the job. I'm spinning the part in the lathe chuck. This is a large four-jaw self-centering lathe chuck which makes the job easier. As you can see I'm using 100 grit emery cloth for this job, keeping my fingers out of the way at all times. Now the clip is running at the correct speed and in no time at all the tank appears very shiny but it really isn't, it's scratched quite badly which will be great to key the paint. Normally I would use copper for the tanks but in this case I'm using brass because black gates had temporarily run out of the copper in the size that I required. Brass or copper, copper or brass, it makes no difference. This is only an exhaust residue tank, it's not a vitally important part. Its only function is to stop the oil from going up the chimney and dropping back down into the fire and making a noise very much like a fish and chip shop. Apart from being a bit of a health hazard if you're running indoors, it's a good idea to make sure that the only thing that goes up the chimney is water vapour, not an emulsion of steam oil and water. The oil and water residue stays in the condenser oil trap. And by fitting a water tap with an extension pipe that goes to the bottom of the tank inside, you can easily drain the residue into a suitable receptacle for disposal. I wasn't actually going to show the making of a condenser because I've actually made quite a few videos about doing the same thing. But I thought, well, this is a little bit different. And besides, the one that I'm making is not part of the 3 Stuart steam plant project. I built this condenser oil trap about a week ago. And the customer is from Australia. He's currently spending a bit of time in England helping his daughter locate into a university. I also have an interesting steam pump that I'm working on. There'll be a video about that shortly. And hopefully when the customer arrives next week, he should be able to pick up both items. This clip shows the inlet and exhaust unions fitted to the tank. These will also be soft soldered in position. And to prevent them from working loose, I've fitted union nuts on the inside as well. I didn't used to do it this way, but I found it to be a better method. If the external union nuts are over tightened and then removed, there's no chance of the solder giving way because they are locked in position. It's simple yet effective, a bit like me. In this clip, I'm scratching the base to key it for the paint. Before doing this, I drilled and deburred the four mounting holes. I'll show this in detail when I get round to making the other three tanks. For this job, I'm not using emery cloth, I'm using Scotch Bright, which scores the surface very well. I will be using etch primer, although etch primer is designed for steel, but this particular etch primer that I use is really good stuff. And it seems to also stick very well to brass and copper, provided that you score the surface. I temporarily fitted a tap in the top cap. This is not soldered together, these are just loose parts to show more or less what it's going to look like. Now it's soldering time. I'm using this stuff, it's called Fryer Lux Paint. It's finely ground solder in a flux mixture. If you're going to use this stuff, I do recommend that you read the instructions. As you can see, I'm applying a generous coating of this solder paint, not just on the edges, but on the inside. So that when the tank gets hot, the solder runs down and forms a fillet all the way around the inside. And to make sure that there aren't any leaks, I run round with some wire solder too. In this clip I'm applying the fryer looks to the bottom part and you can clearly see 
the nice fillet of solder where the tube meets the top. In this clip I'm tidying up the fillet on the outside of the tank and I'm using a paintbrush dipped in water. This is a technique you need to practice. It's not a good idea to put the paintbrush into the flame, which is what I used to do when I first started making these things. You have to keep the part hot so the solder is molten and the clean water brushes away the solder and the flux in one fell swoop. And here is the condenser oil trap soldered together and as you can see it's quite neat. It will need some attention on the outside before painting to get rid of any residue. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.